Friends, it is uh, Wednesday, August 31, 2022. And we have a short passage today from Genesis 31, 17 through 18. Jacob has worked 14 years for uh, Rachel. And in so doing, along the way, he's gained uh, 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 Leah as his other wife after the first seven years. And so it, this is a period of time when, when people practiced bigamy, uh, multiple marriage. And uh, Jacob has now become husband to these two women, and he's had children. And he, 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 this becomes a decisive point where he decides he's going to go back home. Jacob arose and set his children and his wives on camels, and he drove away all of his livestock, all the property that he gained, the, the animals in his possession that he'd acquired in Paddan Aram, to go to his father Isaac, who was in the land of Canaan. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we had this one moment, didn't we? Uh, seven years previous, more than seven years previous to this story where uh, Jacob wakes up next to Leah thinking he's married to Rachel and it's sort of a reality check. And I talked about how in some sense, because we idolize and idealize our partners, there'll come a time, no matter if we, whoever our Rachel is, that we, we end up next to Leah, a person who's a little unexpected, we'll discover their flaws and struggles. That's part of the design of marriage because marriage is a training ground for lovers where we help each other become the best version of who we're meant to be. We learn to love not selfishly wanting our romantic ideas to be fulfilled, but instead selflessly helping uh, to, to, to serve and bless the other party. And in so doing, we get in touch with a greater love, which we'll explore a little bit more uh, during the week. But think about Jacob's situation for a moment. Jacob had this ideal love, he finally marries her. And I have to tell you, as the story goes on, that didn't solve all his problems. It didn't fix his character flaws. He had character flaws. He was a trickster who was always trying to get his own way. He would let his ambition overcome his morals. It didn't fix all of that. Uh, it didn't guarantee his spiritual life because he was a guy who, in some senses, wanted to run his own show. He didn't want to follow God. It didn't solve his family problems, his broken relationship with his father or his brother. Um, there were lots of things that needed fixing in Jacob's life, and it didn't all happen because he suddenly was, was connected with Rachel. In fact, in many ways, it made his life more complicated. The pursuit of Rachel, many ends up with two wives, children. He has to deal with jealousy. He has to deal with a range of issues, becoming a husband and a father. So... Um, it's interesting. It was an impossible expectation to put Rachel on a pedestal and to expect that this was going to fix his life. And we lay an undue weight on others when we expect the same thing. Marriage is really a, a chance for us to learn how to love. Uh, we don't find the perfect partner and just live blissfully ever after. We, we, we find someone who, who we're deeply connected to, whom we want and whom we desire, but with then we know we'll have to cultivate all the aspects of love with that person. We'll have to learn how to be deep and, and, and consistent and faithful friends, supporters, and encouragers. And in the midst of that, we will discover the greatest love, the love of God, which can not only unite people, but can bring healing and health, health and salvation to the world. Uh, I think one of the most important parts of love in marriage is the friendship. It's the clear communication. It's the developing of common interests. It's the, the patient uh, search for understanding. It is uh, patterns of time, uh, investment of time and energy together in common projects and forms of service. And in all those ways, we deepen our, our connection to someone. And then we have more to express when we come to the moments of romantic love as well. Let's take a moment and pray. Lord, we want to be great friends. Uh, we want to do, learn how to be friends with our partners. And in that way, uh, we learn how to be better friends out in the world, how to be more understanding, how to re resolve differences, how to help each other to grow. And so uh, we ask your blessing on our communication, our conflict resolution, on the development of, of common areas of life and connection. Uh, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.